The next concept we are going to learn is the pressure difference created across spherical meniscus. In the previous tutorials, we learned how meniscus are formed and how a uh, surface uh, is formed. And uh, as a continuation, we will be learning this. Uh, but before that, now at the beginning, when we started the, the surface tension lesson, we uh, learned about these phenomenon we see around us in our day-to-day -day life, uh, which are created due to surface tension. So under that, uh, we discussed uh, a few. And uh, now we, did, we are going to discuss about these two. Now, why rain droplets are spherical in shape? Why not a cube? Why not a co cone? Why not a pyramid pyramidal shape? So let's see. Now, <clears throat> when you have a certain uh, volume of, uh, you know, a liquid, certain volume of liquid, I just say a certain volume of liquid you have, a random volume of liquid, uh, it can take any shape, it can take any shape, uh, but um, we learned something called uh, surface energy, I hope you all can remember the equation for surface energy, now surface energy, uh, we took it as capital E, and that is equal to surface tension into area, this is the equation for surface energy, and uh, this area, this A is not just area, it is actually surface area, so if you want the stability of something to be high for stability to be high stability to be high energy of that object should be lower so if you can agree with me for example think of a, a mountain a place like this hmm? when you have an object think of an object here and think of an object here so this object is at rest and it is very very stable we call it stable equilibrium but this object is at rest but still it is very unstable a small push given to that object will, uh, uh, will, will disturb its equilibrium yeah but this object has the highest energy a lot of potential energy is stored in that object this object has zero potential energy zero kinetic energy no energy if you take this as your zero potential level all right so this uh, this object has the lowest energy so it has the highest stability this object has the highest energy so it will have lower stability so if you want the stability to be more your energy has to be less and according to this equation if you want uh, now surface tension for water is constant yeah so if you want your energy to be less then your surface area a that is surface area must be less then only the surface energy stored in the uh, volume of liquid will be less so that it will be more stable so out of all the shapes you have you know 3d shapes a cube cuboid uh, they give you a certain volume of something let's say a certain volume of clay and you have to create an object you have to design an object but that object should have the minimum surface area minimum surface area so out of all the options you have a sphere will have the minimum surface area okay sphere will have the minimum surface area and uh, we know the equation for that also in small class we have learned in ALL also we use this quite frequently 4 pi r squared if someone gives you a volume of something if uh, you can create in any shape but sphere will have the lowest surface area so that's why uh, water droplets acquire the shape of a sphere why is that to minimize the surface area so that the energy of the uh, liquid surface will be minimized so that the liquid surface is uh, more stable everything will like to be stable yeah fine so that's the reason why uh, spherical drops are uh, what do you call that Sp uh, uh, sorry water drops are spherical in shape all right the next point now let's say you have a small uh, amount of water all right you have a small amount of water and you give you blow it or something like that you can't create bubbles from that yeah can't create bubbles from that but let's say i have that water and I add a little bit of soap to that water now okay now I have soap plus water same amount of water I have added soap and if I blow now if you do it now you will get a large bubble like this what is that you get a soap bubble so when I say soap bubble inside you have air outside also you have air so this is that uh, soap solution but you can't do the same with water drop all right so the reason for this is also again the uh, surface energy now we learned the equation for surface energy that is e equals uh, t o t a surface energy is equal to surface uh, tension into surface area uh, when you compare the surface tension for water and for soap 
solution who has the higher surface tension it's water because we have learned in the earlier lessons when you add an impurity like soap the surface tension of water reduces so the surface energy is remain, going to remain the same when you reduce the surface tension you can go for a higher surface area that's why a soap bubble can be created but with water you can't create bubbles like that so this is also another phenomenon of uh, surface tension again why is a bubble spherical in shape same reason it will always try to create a surface where the surface energy is minimum so that the energy is minimum so that the stability is high this is how it is now the uh, now these two uh, aspects are important for this lesson also because it has a spherical we are talk, going to talk about spherical meniscus so see you see a spherical part here you see a spherical part here okay right so before i moved on to the equation or theory of this i just wanted to explain you these two why uh, liquid drops are spheres and how a soap bubble is created uh, from a soap water but uh, why bubbles can't be created using water all right fine now let's move on to this uh, lesson that, that lesson in that lesson what we are going to learn is uh, the pressure difference created now first of all uh, when you have when you uh, when you have a small uh, you know volume of water and then and always that volume will try to uh, you know contract and create a shape where the surface area is small so you have a liquid volume like this and it contracts and eventually creates a shape like this so the particles inside are compressed a bit correct they are compressed a bit and particles outside are air they are not as compressed as much as this so wherever you see a surface like this wherever you see surfaces like this spherical surfaces you always should know that inside the pressure will be high and outside the pressure will be low the reason is when a liquid uh, layer when a liquid surface is formed actually the particles get contracted so that inside that uh, liquid uh, layer or liquid surface the pressure will be high because particles are uh, much closer and uh, co collisions will be higher so uh, higher pressure will be high pressure will be low right so we can ex uh, compare that in uh, different cases number one you can say a liquid drop you can compare it in a liquid drop okay so when you take a liquid drop inside you have liquid uh, outside you have air yeah inside you have liquid outside you have air so when you have liquid inside i have used blue blue, blue color for liquid outside there will be a pressure we will mark it as p2 or you can even say atmospheric pressure but for the timing i'll take it as p2 inside there will be a pressure p1 definitely p1 will be larger than p2 because p1 these, uh, these molecules are contracted then uh, you can compare a soap bubble just like we compared earlier uh, a soap bubble is also a spherical shape but here we have air outside and air inside that doesn't mean the pressure is same outside it will be p2 inside it will be p1 again p2 will be less than p1 reason inside the air particles are contracted uh, when the so liquid surface was created all right fine and another very important uh, uh, case we come across is this uh, liquid meniscus so where there are few types of liquid meniscus we learnt so i will quickly uh, consider three types all right some liquid meniscus look like this like uh, bent downwards right sagging we call it sagging and then uh, some liquid meniscus can be flat like this flat and then there can be liquid meniscus like this like in mercury okay we call it hogging sagging hogging all right now uh, right regardless of the liquid here again we can compare there will be a pressure here 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 and the part where i'm highlighting with blue is the liquid all right this is the liquid good now let's compare the pressures here we have a p1 here we have p2 here we have p1 here we have p2 here also we have p1 here also we have p2 all right so here you can see p1 is inside the curved part do you agree with me like this compare this and this now you can compare this part and this part so here p1 will have a higher pressure than p2 the reason is uh, this area the molecules are compressed more because during the creation of this meniscus or this spherical surface here 
the surface is flat. When the surface is flat, both the pressures will be equal. This is how we assumed for all the questions uh, we did earlier. Flat. Right. Now, here if you consider, uh, now we have compare between P1 and P2. P2 is inside the curved part. So, pressure of the uh, pressure of uh, pressure P2 will be greater than P1. This understanding is very, very important for you to uh, when you move ahead in this lesson. So, uh, there will be a pressure difference created across a spherical meniscus or spherical liquid surface since when a spherical surface is created, molecules are contracted. So, the, uh, it will be created and inside that uh, spherical surface, pressure will be high because molecules are packed closer to each other and outside the pressure will be lower. So, based on that, we compare different types of liquid surfaces. And uh, now, let us try to figure out an equation for this pressure difference. The heading was pressure difference. So, here there is a pressure difference. Here also there is a pressure difference. Here the pressure difference is 0 because both the pressures are equal. Right, fine. Now, uh, this can be done in two ways. Uh, first, let me explain. Um, uh, first, let me explain number 1. I will use another color for this. Number 1, uh, for liquid drops droplets for liquid droplets uh, that means there is a liquid it will be spherical in shape and it will be uh, filled with liquid that means inside we have liquid right there is no air inside complete liquid yeah liquid air so one free surface last in the last tutorial we learned how many free surface one free surface so here you can compare it like this two hemispherical parts are you know uh, are together and they try to move apart from each other, but due to surface tension, they are, uh, what do you call that, uh, combined together due to surface tension. So, if I put that into a diagram, whatever I explain now, the diagram is going to look like this, two hemispherical parts trying to move apart from each other are held together by surface tension, like this, okay, like this surface, like this. So, the, how are the forces going to act? This is going to attract this. This is this will be attracted by this part. This will be attracted by this part. So, the forces force is going to attract, uh, act like this, correct? And this will also going to attract the other one like this. Perfect. Okay. So, there will be a force. We will take that whole thing as force. And if you take the radius of this as uh, uh, radius, we will take it as simple r. We will need that for this lesson, radius uh, simple r, okay, radius simple r and uh, all right, now let us start. Now, uh, we know that we are going to learn about the pressure difference created. Now, uh, equation of equation for force is this, we learnt uh, in the earlier lessons, force is equal to surface tension multiplied by length, agree, okay? surface tension multiplied by length, but force, but uh, we know that uh, Pressure difference can be written as force over area. That means uh, pressure difference into area is equal to force. Okay, right. So due to this force created uh, on the surface, there will be a pressure difference created, and uh, then I'll substitute that value delta P A equals uh, T in T L. All right, fine. Now for length, I have to put this length. This is the length along which the surface. Uh, the force is acting, correct? And what is the equation for the length? That length is going to be the circumference of a circle, so it is 2 pi r, okay? Now, pressure difference multiplied by, you can see this pressure difference is created along a circular surface, circular cross section, see? Circular cross section, so for A, you have to put pi r square, not 4 pi r square, you do not have, you do, we do not put the surface area, we rather put the perpendicular area, which is a uh, circle equal to t, I will leave it t, t as it is, into L is the length and this time the length is 2 pi r and into 1. I hope you guys can remember why I am putting this 1. Why is that? This is a liquid drop, so there is only one free surface, you will multiply that by 1. Done? Okay. So, if you simplify this equation somehow, you will be getting uh, pi and pi will get cancelled off, r, r will get cancelled off and finally, you will end up in an equation like this, change in pressure equal to 2t divided by simple r, a very, very important equation, right? This is one of the last equations we are going to learn 
uh, yeah, there are maybe two more equations with that the lesson will be done so this is the equation for the pressure difference created uh, across a spherical uh, meniscus or spherical liquid surface but there will be there should be only one uh, free surface for one free surface keep that in mind okay one free surface this is that equation all right and i have explained you how the equation was derived sometimes you might have to derive that at the exams as well but uh, at least try to remember this equation you will need this uh, you know quite frequently all right and uh, now this is for this is for uh, liquid drops but if you apply the equation for soap bubbles the same equation for soap bubbles it's going to be the same uh, work it's going to be the same uh, steps but here we will have to multiply it by 2 why do we have to multiply it by 2 because uh, this uh, soap bubble has two free surfaces hence the equation will be altered to this change in pressure equals 40 over simple r if it has two free surfaces this is this equation is for two free surfaces you can try it but no need to repeat it uh, now this equation we learned for the spe specifically for liquid drops this equation we learned for the liquid drops uh, you have to follow the same set of uh, workings for a uh, soap bubble uh, because there are two free surfaces and the only change you had to make in this uh, in this uh, procedure is multiplying it by 2 because there are two free surfaces and instead of 2t over r you will get 4t over r so this is the equation you will be using if they have given you a liquid meniscus take a liquid meniscus how many free surfaces are there let me mark the free surfaces the only one free surface right how many free surfaces are here only one free surface so for all these one three free surface uh, cases you can use this okay and here we have two free surfaces two interface two interfaces actually one inside and there's another one outside so for these cases you will be using for this you will be using delta p equals 40 over simple r where simple r is the radius right and for this you will be using delta p equals 2t over simple r again simple r is the radius all right so this is all uh, from pressure differences across spherical meniscus uh, we'll do some questions so that uh, you will get a better understanding as to how you are going to apply these equations for real life situations